Well, good morning, everybody. Pastor Scott here. It is uh, Saturday morning, um, March 20th, and uh, that means that today is the first day of spring, I think. I think it's today and not tomorrow. And uh, while it's cold this morning, uh, it's supposed to get up toward around 60 uh, this afternoon, so it's even starting to look a little bit like spring outside, which should be uh, very encouraging to us to consider uh, that this uh, winter, which uh, I heard somebody tell me the other day, uh, saw a record amount of snowfall for one month. Well, for one month, for February, I should say. Record amount of snowfall for February. Seems like this winter might be uh, slowly but surely on its way out, uh, but we shall see uh, what the Lord will give us. Uh, for now, we're thankful for the sunshine. We're thankful for the Lord waking us up yet another day, sustaining us, keeping us, helping us, and uh, shepherding us uh, through our various lots in life and, um, and keeping us together as the people of God. Uh, not just as a collection of individuals, but as a collection of individuals who make up the household of God. Like living stones were being built into a spiritual house, uh, the Apostle Peter says. So that being said, um, I am starting a new study with you today. And it is a new study that is out of this book by Graham Goldsworthy, who is an Australian uh, theologian, retired uh, theologian, but still writing books. And the book is called According to Plan. Uh, the unfolding revelation of God in the Bible, and it is uh, dealing with the concept known as biblical theology, uh, an introductory biblical theology. And when we talk about biblical theology, uh, what we're talking about is the uh, study of how every text of the Bible relates to every other text through the Bible's main message. Um, so ultimately, there are different definitions of biblical theology. You can do, you can get online and Google biblical theology. You might find different definitions. Um, but uh, as, as I understand it primarily, and as I treat it and think about biblical theology, and I'm writing my uh, dissertation partially on biblical theology, um, to me and to Goldsworthy and to those who I really follow and who I really trust, um, it has to do with how every text of the Bible relates to every other text of the Bible uh, through the Bible's main message. So it's the idea that the Bible's sort of main message, what the Bible is focused on telling us, uh, primarily that becomes the glue or the context through which, well, it's the glue through, uh, the, the glue by which every passage of scripture relates to every other passage and the context through which we understand ultimately every passage of scripture. Um, and so I think it's very important, and uh, I wanted to uh, do a little study uh, with you based on some kind of uh, based on you know some kind of study of biblical theology. And I just thought that this book would be the best way to go because I know for a fact that Graham uh, wrote this book um, after having uh, presented the concepts in a local church context. So you know he was a, he's an academic, he's a, an intellectual and a theologian, and he does a lot of his work. Um, with, uh, with students and with, uh, with people who are being trained for the pastorate and all of that. But this book in particular was written with the local church in mind. And uh, there are some chapters that are a little bit kind of hard to, uh, you have to like really think a little bit harder to uh, get, get to the bottom of them. Uh, but I think that, I think you can follow along. I think it's something that will be a, a help to you and to me. It might actually explain a little bit of kind of my approach to the Bible a little bit better. Um, and, uh, and I think that in that sense, you know, it'll help you to it'll help you to kind of uh, get inside the mind of your pastor a little bit, at least the good parts uh, of the mind of your pastor a little bit, because not every part is good. Um, my thinking isn't always isn't always the best. And uh, and uh, I admit that. But certainly, uh, certainly my theology um, stems out of this concept of, uh, of biblical theology. And I think it's I think it's important. I think it's helpful. Uh, I think that it's how the Bible is, uh, is giving itself to us to be read. And ultimately, I think it's how God wants us to read the Bible. So I hope that it's helpful to you uh, to do uh, this study. One more thing I want to say before we dig in. This is, um, and this might be, I might be getting ahead of myself a little bit, but the previous study uh, was what could be called a sort of a systematic theology study. So and in, uh, in scholarship and in theological circles, uh, there's systematic theology is called ST, uh, just an abbreviation, whereas biblical theology is called BT. And uh, they're looked at as distinct disciplines that can ultimately help each other, but they certainly are distinct. 
Systematic theology has to do with the logical breakdown of the Bible's doctrinal content um, into different categories. So you're breaking down the Bible's content, doctrinal content, into logical categories. Um, and that's what we looked at in the Wesley Catechism. It's really dealing with different categories of theology broken down into a logical sort of structure. Um, and, that's a, and that's important. It's very important very important thing to do that. I think it's a, I think, you know, we all are systematic theologians in the sense that we all think that there are certain doctrines that are maybe a little bit more foundational than other ones. And, uh, and we should start there and then build sort of on that. And if somebody were to ask us, you know, what do you believe? You would start with foundational things. And then if they were to ask you, what do you believe about this or that? And the other thing, uh, you would have answers for that because everybody sort of has categories um, in how they sort of organize and structure their uh, doctrine, and, and everybody does that. Everybody's a systematic theologian. Biblical theology is a little bit different. It's not, um, it's not contradictory to systematic theology, but it's a little bit different in the sense that the goal in biblical theology is to trace the unfolding revelation of God in the Bible. It's, its goal isn't to logically structure doctrines as much as to follow the storyline and just kind of see how things unfold. Uh, as the story goes along, and to come to conclusions really that way. Um, as I said earlier, it's the, it's the study of how every text of the Bible relates to every other text of the Bible through the Bible's main message. You might say that it, that it is systematic in the sense that it takes the main message of the Bible, what I would call the gospel, or what the Bible calls the gospel, I think that's the main message of the Bible, and it starts there, and then it seeks to read every text of the Bible in light of that main message. So systematics, you're starting with foundational things and sort of building up, building up from there. Uh, some people start with the doctrine of God. Some people start with the doctrine of Scripture, and then they go from there. And I think it's a good place to start. Biblical theology would start uh, usually with the gospel message. And instead of building up you know, from there into different categories of doctrine, it's seeking to read through the Scripture in light of that one sort of uh, core uh, doctrine, that is to say, the gospel. And so hopefully you can kind of see the, the difference here. Uh, whereas systematic theology can be thought of in terms of, um, what's one way we can put it? So, sort of in terms of uh, like your, uh, your, your spice cabinet in your kitchen, where you open the cabinet and you see all these different spices there. Um, that's what systematic theology is more like. Uh, whereas biblical theology wouldn't, uh, it would have to use maybe maybe a different illustration. It's a set of glasses, um, and so I would say in BT biblical theology, the gospel is your glasses. You take your glasses, uh, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you put them on, and then you study the rest of the scripture. Um, this isn't to say that systematic theology isn't interested in studying the whole Bible, um, nor is it to say that in biblical theology. Uh, we don't have a set of beliefs that we bring to the scriptures and that we're not trying to derive conclusions like in systematic theology. But it is to say that the starting point and sort of the method is a little bit different. In ST, uh, you are um, mining the scriptures for what it says about particular things and then you're organizing them like in your spice cabinet. But in BT, you're taking the gospel as your starting point you are putting that those glasses on and then you're studying the scriptures and coming to conclusions in the end but not as much focused on uh, the various um, you know the various doctrines um, without um, without keeping them in context of the gospel so hopefully you can kind of see and i know i've been talking a lot about this already i'm already nine minutes into the video but hopefully you can see um, kind of the difference um, it, it would um, uh, it would be like BT, they, okay, the difference in how they help each other. Uh, whereas in BT, you're starting with the gospel, and that is, uh, that is the context of every passage. Um, in ST, you're sort of taking um, just the, the various things that the Bible says about different topics. And, I mean, you're, you're keeping context in mind, yes, um, but it's not as though the gospel is sort of the foundational idea there. Um, 
like it is in BT. So there are just there are some differences. There are some differences, and uh, I just give you all that by way of introduction. That's t that's ten minutes. I need to uh, I need to get through really what Goldsworthy says in his first chapter here. Hopefully within the next five or six minutes, but you know how long it takes me. Again, according to plan, the unfolding revelation of God in the Bible. Feel free to get a copy of this if you would like to. Um, it's it's available on Amazon easily. It should be it should be less than twenty dollars, maybe fifteen or sixteen bucks or something like that. If you needed help getting a copy of it and you'd like it, uh, let me know. We can we can figure something out uh, trying to get you a copy of it. But the first chapter, the leech has two daughters. The leech has two daughters, and you might wonder what what kind of title is that for a chapter. Actually, it's taken from uh, Proverbs thirty fifteen, which says the leech has two daughters. Give and give, they cry. Um, so that's kind of what he's talking about there, and I'll explain, you know, why what that means, uh, really, why he starts off with that. But this chapter is uh, is the only chapter that makes up the first section of the book, which is biblical theology. Why, W H Y, why, not the letter Y, biblical theology. Why, why do biblical theology? Why take this uh, approach? And the first reason that he gives, the first primary reason, is that. Agreement on biblical authority still leaves us with issues to resolve. So we could have uh, have our conservative ideals about the Bible, and uh, and we do. You know, as a Baptist church, we think that we hold to a conservative position on the nature of Scripture, whereby the Scripture is indeed the Word of God. Uh, we believe that it's inerrant, that it's infallible, that it's perfect, that it's a perfect witness, a perfect revelation in everything that uh, in everything that it is aiming to tell us. Uh, it might not scientifically be in every it might not be the case that in every sense every single maybe number perhaps is meant to be taken literally um, for instance I read something about a battle that Israel had the other day where it said they had 300,000 men and uh, that would seem to be a large large number for for them back then it might not be that that number is meant to be taken literally it might just meant to be taken figuratively whereby we understand that there were a lot of men fighting for Israel it could be literal whatever it is we believe that that number is inspired by God and given to us uh, we just uh, we just think that uh, that the purpose of God shines through in every text and we would take a position that would say the 300,000 men um, that could be that could be the literal number, or it could be a figurative number. Whatever it is, God inspired that to be written, and we want to submit ourselves to it. Um, so, so we can agree on biblical authority, but there still would be issues to resolve. For instance, um, in our church, difference differences of opinion as regards the millennium. Is there going to be a millennium when Jesus returns on earth before the new heavens and the new earth, before the judgment and all of that? Some some people in our church believe that. Some people believe that we are in the millennium right now, and that it's a figurative sort of millennium. Um, and, other, and another sort of issue would be baptism. In our church, we all agree on baptism, but differences between our church and a Presbyterian church that might be conservative as well, we would disagree on baptism, but we would hold the same standard of the, the uh, Scripture's authority. So, so you see, we would agree on Scripture's authority, but we still have some disagreements and some issues. So what would be a good place to start? You know, how would we uh, start addressing the problems? Uh, BT, that is to say, taking the gospel as the foundational principle uh, in our interpretation and in our exegesis of the scripture, uh, would begin to answer that question, how we can resolve some of these issues. Secondly, uh, Goldsworthy brings up problematic passages, problematic passages, and one of them is that idea that the leech has two daughters, give and give, they cry, Proverbs 30, 15. Or, um, or uh, the, uh, the law uh, command, Exodus 23, 19, do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Um, we'd be like, you know, what, what in the world is that talking about? Does that apply today? Um, other passages seem to present moral problems or just hard to believe. Joshua 10, 13, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. Seems awfully strange. Something like that would happen. Exodus 10, 20. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. Hard passages. You know, a lot of people, when they read those verses for the first time, they're like, what? You know, what in the world is... As conservative Christians, we would say, well, it's just it's the Word of God. That's what it says. We believe it. But other people would read it and say, what in the world is going on there? Um, so problematic passages confront us all the time. Things that we have a hard time maybe believing or understanding. 
And biblical theology is about relating these problem passages, again, like I said earlier, to the Bible's overall message that gives it its context. And so that's why it's important for us to be clear on the overall message. I think it's the gospel, and I think the gospel is a full sort of, uh, sort of a full idea. That's what actually I'm working on in my dissertation. Thirdly, uh, Goldsworthy talks about the importance of, of the right telling of Bible stories. The right telling of Bible stories. Um, making a little note here so that I can remember to revisit it later in my own study. Uh, we all hear Bible stories from the time that we're little, when, we, uh, when we're going to Sunday school or vacation Bible school or something like that. And uh, the Bible stories are usually all told in a, in a way that's good, devotional, encouraging, um, about God's faithfulness and about how we can be courageous and all of those kind of things. Very important, very important for us to approach the scriptures um, like that. But, uh, but BT would say that the goal should be to, to pursue the relationship of each story to the Bible's message, that is the gospel. So for instance, why did God make the waters go up at the Red Sea so that Israel could pass through? Because God is a redeeming God. And he wants us to think of him as a redeeming God. That's part of the gospel message. He redeems, right? Uh, why, did, why was David able to defeat the giant Goliath, who's this great warrior for battle, and David goes up there with no armor and just a sling and some, uh, some rocks, and he defeats him? Is that a fable? Is that a legend? Uh, how are we supposed to understand that? And what's, you know, How would that relate to the gospel? Well, it relates to the gospel not only because God is a God who's faithful to those who trust in him to carry out what they're called to do, uh, but also because David is a type of Christ who's going to come later on and defeat the true enemy that seems too big to be beaten and too great to be beaten, and he seems too small and humble to beat him, but indeed he does it. You see, you see how BT works. You see how gospel-centered BT um, ultimately works. It's trying to um, it's trying to show how the gospel gives context for these various Bible stories. Fourthly, um, Goldsworthy talks in the chapter about uh, how there are Old Testament difficulties for Christians. So as Christians, uh, we approach the Old Testament and there are some things that are hard for us to really understand, uh, hard for us to contextualize and then to appropriate in our own lives. And BT is about how discovering, is about discovering, excuse me, how the Old Testament and the New Testament relate to each other. That is to say how the Old Testament relates to Jesus and through him to us. So hopefully you understand that it's about the relationship between the Testaments. Theologians for centuries have been talking about how um, your understanding of how the Old Testament relates to the New Testament basically is going to decide your theology, you know, what camp of Christianity or what camp of evangelicalism perhaps that you'll be a part of. It's determined by how you understand the Old Testament to relate to the New Testament. I think that's true. I also think that it's foundational for Christians in general, regardless of how they think that the Testaments relate, to pursue how the Old Testament relates to Jesus because we as Christians are in Christ and therefore how the Old Testament relates to Him then we take it to understand how it relates to us through him. Um, so, uh, so again, you know, using David and Goliath, David's a type of Jesus. Goliath is sort of a type of Satan and the enemy. Jesus defeats Satan because he's courageous, Jesus is. And, uh, and nobody thought that he was going to be able to win the battle, but he did. Even the disciples were doubtful. Even the disciples were doubtful after he had won the battle. Uh, but indeed he did, and because we trust in him, because we believe in him, the promise then is that he is going to empower us to face whatever giants might be in our lives as well. And that might sound a little bit uh, maybe cliche, uh, but it's true. It's certainly true, because, the, because David and Goliath relates to Jesus pretty directly through typology, uh, and we're in Jesus, therefore it relates to us. That's really what is uh, one of the goals as well. Um, Last thing I'll say here, because I'm running out of time, the last thing I'll say, the fifth thing that Goldsworthy brings up is that, it, is that it's important sometimes to be able to see clearly um, further. Sometimes we have to get up higher to be able to see something. So for instance, uh, a biblical example, Zacchaeus, he's short, 
he can't see Jesus, but he wants to see Jesus so bad. So he gets up into the tree, and uh, as he's up there in the tree, uh, he's got a view of Jesus, and um, and uh, he's able to see. It, sometimes it's important to get a bird's eye view because otherwise, literally, if a bird's in the tree, Zacchaeus gets a bird's eye view uh, because he can't he can't see otherwise uh, unless he gets up high. So it, I'm taking forever to explain the illustration here, but the point is that in BT. In biblical theology, uh, we are getting up high and looking down at the scriptures, not in the sense that we are trying to judge the scriptures, but in the sense that we are trying to take what we think is the scripture's main message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, what it means for the world and all of that, and we are trying to get up high with that so that we can see the whole lay of the land. We can understand how Genesis relates to Romans, how 1 Corinthians relates to numbers, you know, how, how uh, the Psalms relate to Matthew, so on and so forth. And, uh, and we can only really see that if we get up high enough to kind of get a good view of the entire uh, thing. And so that's really what we're after in biblical theology, is giving us the context, the ultimate context through which we can understand um, the whole of the Scripture, the whole of the Bible. And it's difficult, but it's something that is, uh, we're, we're using some context to understand the scripture every time we, every time we come to it. And uh, BT is ultimately all about starting with the gospel message, starting with Jesus. Um, as Goldsworthy says, it's several points throughout the book, so that we can end with Jesus. Starting with Jesus so that we can end with Jesus, because he is indeed the first and the last. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to let you go. So, Father, guide our study as we uh, seek to understand the scriptures, to think about them the right way so that we can hear your word and listen and follow and obey, knowing that you will guard us and protect us as we do. We pray all that in Christ's name. Amen. Lord bless you. Bye-bye.